Hey guys, my name is Morgan. I'm the newest employee at the Rag Company. I consider myself an enthusiast and I love taking care of my car. Since I started working here, I learned that Levi and Anthony are really good detailers and I want to be just like them. In this series, we're going to go simple step by step to take us from washing our cars in our driveway all the way up to professional level auto detailing. So, if you want to learn how to take Levi and Anthony's jobs out from under them, let's get started. All right, Ram. Well, I just finished up learning how to clean the seats, and mm -hmm. apparently there's another step that you can go further than that. Yeah, so um, what you've done uh, on the other seat is just clean it uh -huh. um, and apply a care product. But there are certain times when um, the seat needs a bit more than just cleaning. Okay. Um, all cleaning might do is just expose the, the hidden cracks um, that are there. Um, and quite often uh, it needs a restoration process, okay. which is what we're going to look at now. So if you want to go around the other side yeah. um, and we can get going. Let's do it. Cheers. So you've seen um, how we clean leather seats mm -hmm. using our product. Yep. Um, the next stage is obviously to look at a minor restoration job. There's okay. various levels of restoration, mm -hmm. um, but this seat here requires just a minor restoration. Um, and um, the, the, the main area that we're gonna be fixing uh, is gonna be the, the bolsters and the, and the flank here um, of the seat. And what's happened is, um, if you can see these mm -hmm. corners here, You'll, you'll notice that just by coming in and out of the car, getting in and out of the car, um, pure friction has removed a lot of the paint um, from the surface of the leather. So the leather's not damaged, mm -hmm. uh, but the paint is, has, has come off. Okay. And um, what we're gonna do is just restore that paint back onto the, to the leather seat, okay. right? Um, but before we get into that, mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to share with you very quickly um, to give you an idea of what our leather seat's made of. Uh, especially when it comes to automotive mm -hmm. interiors. Um, so automotive interiors, by and large, have a specific type of leather called pigmented leather, okay. uh, which basically involves uh, a layer of primer and a, la a layer of paint or pigment on top that's sprayed on. Uh, and that paint layer is protected using a clear coat um, known in leather terms as a top coat. Okay. Right? Um, so friction getting in and out has basically just eroded that top coat that was there uh, and they've then started going into um, the paint surface that, that has also come off um, and we're very quickly now just going to restore that. Okay. Right? So um, the first part of the restoration process would be to, to clean the seats. Right. So all the bits that you did mm -hmm. there on the first seat, um, we do exactly that here. Um, clean it thoroughly, make sure that um, um, all the dirt is completely lifted off the surface. Okay. Um, and after you've cleaned it, just check if the seats feel a bit greasy. So if they feel a bit greasy or if they feel oily, mm -hmm. you want to use a degreaser to, to remove that as well. But this seat here um, looks perfectly fine. Okay. Um, I don't think there's any grease on there, so we can just um, go ahead and apply the, the, the paint. Um, product that we've got. Okay. Um, now, at this point, I just want to introduce you very quickly to the paint product that we've got. Okay. Right? Um, so the, the product's called Color Lock Leather Fresh, right? Um, and this product has um, the binders, so the primer, um, the paint, and the clear coat all built into one. Okay. Right? Whereas the professional way of doing it would involve spraying a layer of primer, the paint, and the clear coat. Uh, but for our end users and for our customers who don't necessarily have access to all the spray equipment, mm -hmm. uh, this product here is very, very useful. Okay. Right? This is a BMW black and that's the color that we've mixed up. Okay, and you guys CT. do have like specific to each car like matched, right? Yes, so we, we've got uh, an extensive collection of samples mm -hmm. within our database, okay. um, ranging from BMWs, Mercedes, mm -hmm. to a lot of other automotive manufacturers. So um, if you have any issues finding out mm -hmm. what type of interior you've got, you can just email us your chassis number uh, and we'll do the digging work for you and tell okay. you what interior you've got. Cool, good to know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I suppose uh, all that leaves us to do now is just to get going. Yep, and right? you've got a glove on, so yeah. is that just to keep it from dying? 
getting the dye on your hands? That's it, yeah. I mean, um, these are all water-based dyes, so they're not um, particularly harmful in any way, but okay. um, it's always best to just right. you know, uh, wear a glove. Sure. Um, right, so in terms of applying the, the, the dye or the pigment, um, all these paints come with a piece of sponge. And the way we'd apply it is we'd wipe the paint over the surface. After obviously all the prep work is done, we'd wipe the paint mm -hmm. onto the surface, dab over it, right? And dry it with a heat gun, Okay. right? And our aim is to build multiple thin layers as we go along, okay. as opposed to one slapping one. on a very thick layer, okay. right? That makes uh, sense. We don't want to do that. That generally just leaves a very bad finish. It's best to be patient, build up layers as you go along, cool. right? Yeah. So I'm going to start with this panel here first and we'll then slowly move across the seat, finish the base, and then move on upwards. Okay. Right? Okay, so let's get going. All right, so just get some dye on there and just wipe it across. All right, go and just dab over it. All right, don't worry too much about the bubbles that you're getting on there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to use a heat gun to, to dry this. Okay. So um, as we use a, as we blow some heat gun over it, that will just, all the bubbles will just go away. Right. So let's just do that now. And in terms of the heat gun, um, just keep checking what sort of heat you've got. If you can monitor the temperature on the heat gun, mm -hmm. try and keep it to about um, 450 degrees. Um, that's a decent level of heat. Um, and just keep, make sure you keep moving it. Don't don't sort of hold it in a, mm -hmm. in, in, in one position because you don't want a lot of heat going in one place. You just all we, the only reason we're using the heat gun is just to speed up the drying process. Okay. Right. So. Wow. Just do that. And as you can see, that's just the first layer that's gone on there. Mm -hmm. And that already shows a considerable level of improvement, right? I agree. So, uh, now that we've done that, I am just going to carry on with the rest of the base. Right? And we'll just be wiping it. And again, work one panel at a time. So you have a methodical way of working, so you know where you've applied paint and where you have it, um, rather than sort of going everywhere, mm -hmm. right? And as you wipe the paint, you may get some wipe marks, but the dabbing helps to get rid of that. So um, that's why it's important to just apply multiple layers, allowing us to get rid of all of that. Now, given that this is the first time you're looking at um, someone doing this mm -hmm. and you've been watching me for a couple of minutes do this now, how easy or hard would you, would you say this is at a scale of one to 10? I feel like it's fairly easy. I mean, yeah. it's pretty simple. You just clean it off and yeah. then it's basically like an all in one kind of wipe on yeah. dry kind of thing. That's it. The only, um, um, I suppose there are times when it does get a bit complicated and that's when you've got contrast stitching. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, there's no other way apart from sort of making sure that you mask it very well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, so that does represent a significant type of challenge. But again, um, as long as you're patient um, and you don't try and rush the job, mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll, you're bound to get a, a good finish. All right. As you start applying, you'll notice that there are certain areas that need a bit more paint. Mm -hmm. So you just go over that. So how long would you have to wait between coats then? 
you don't have to wait as long as it's dry, dry then, you're good. Um, then you can you can go ahead and just keep keep building those layers up gotcha. so it's a case of um, it's a case of being patient keep applying right and just probably had so this panel here has probably had about three layers of paint now mm -hmm. um, but there are going to be some areas that need more than more than the others and that's that's it absolutely okay right. Right, so let's just go on to the next panel here this one seems relatively straightforward right. I'm just going to make sure I cover every corner of the area So as you can see, me dabbing the sponge mm -hmm. over the initial areas where I've wiped the paint mm -hmm. gets rid of those streak marks that yes. can show. Right. Yeah, so one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is the ability to color match and to, to be able to deliver a a decent enough match for our customers because mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, in excess of probably three three thousand samples from mm -hmm. various different manufacturers wow. and we get and all these paints that are ordered are mixed to order hmm. right because um, there's just so many variations that we can't possibly have them yeah sort of pre-mixed uh -huh. so um, we just wait for the orders to come in and then mix them on the day but despite that we have a a decent level of turnaround um, so we, we turn around most orders in about 24 hours oh. but if for any reason um, the color doesn't quite match mm -hmm. um, then we ask customers to, to just return it and ideally provide a sample so we have customers who send us headrests or mm. armrests um, so that you know that's something from their own car that we can yeah. use to, to match the pen mm. right because uh, every leather is uh, ages differently, right. uh, is exposed to various different levels of sunlight. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, that's something that, you know, we offer that as a service, but it's, uh, which is why we always recommend that once you have a paint from, from us, mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is black interior, so it's nice and easy in many yeah. ways, but if you've got a different color uh, interior uh, and you order our product, mm -hmm. we always recommend you test in a hidden area first, right? test in a hidden area make sure mm -hmm. that you know it's a decent enough match so before you sort of go ahead and apply it everywhere else okay right. so how long would you have to wait um, after putting that product on to like sit in the seat you can sit straight away you can use the car straight away okay. um, because it's touch dry mm -hmm. almost instantly but we recommend that if you can leave it overnight, okay. you know, yeah. it's best. Right, so if you have um, if you need to go for a short drive somewhere, that's fine, but you don't, ideally you don't want to use it for, you know, you don't want to sit in there and drive for right. uh, any more than an hour really. Mm -hmm. Right, now, before we move on to the upper part here, mm -hmm. um, just touch it quickly, just see how it, see how it feels. Because that is something that most people do with leather seats or they like to do with leather seats mm -hmm. they like to as you yeah. sat in the the seat you like to touch it see how it feels mm -hmm. right and with most areas when you apply any paint onto it you don't want it to feel rough right, right? if it feels rough it just they start picking at it mm -hmm. uh, and that's when you can start getting peeling yeah. and all of those issues right so it's very important to make sure that it's 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 smooth which mm -hmm. this is if for any reason it's not smooth then you can grab like a 4000 grit sand sandpaper mm -hmm. give it a light sand um degrease it once again and just carry on applying more layers of paint okay yeah 
So uh, that brings me to this bolster here, which was the, the worst affected, really. Um, which it always is. Right, I'm gonna do the same. So when it comes to painting or restoring leather, something that you've got to bear in mind is that it's very similar to body wear, mm -hmm. right? In that um, it can be, it needs to be cleaned, it needs to be degreased. Mm -hmm. um, if there are sort of deeper cracks in it, then um, they need to be filled. And if they need to be filled, that filler needs to be sanded, mm -hmm. um, right? Um, just to get it nice and level. Um, so those are products as well that are available, but you know, luckily with this seat, it, it isn't as bad. Um, we're doing a timely repair on this. Yeah. So these areas don't need a lot, so I'm just Quickly applying a thinner coat. So as you can see, I'm not using a lot of paint. Mm -hmm. I'm hardly applying much. And that is gonna be, that is the most important thing to do here. Okay. Right? Because um, a lot of times people end up using a lot of product where it's not necessarily required or even, even necessary. So uh, a small amount of product does go a long way. I mean, we've got, we've got a liter of, of paint here. Yeah. And for this type of restoration, this level of restoration, mm -hmm. this much paint is enough to do a full interior multiple times, hmm. right? So um, may not look like a lot, but it does go uh, a, long a long way, yeah. It just leaves a little bit of the headrest to be done. There's hardly any damage on the headdress. I'm just gonna apply a thin layer just so we can blend it all in. Mm -hmm. There we are. I think we've covered pretty much every, yeah. every part. And that looks a lot better. Yeah, it looks really good. Feels, feels nice, nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, if you, if you really wanted, you could apply a little bit of filler here just to get rid of all of these cracks, but that's just the level of restoration you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I personally think for the age of the car, the seats look in keeping with the age of the car, so it all blends in, because yeah. um, you don't want to have a, a completely brand new seat in a car that's fairly old. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the way we've done it now, it blends in quite nicely. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think uh, these look these look good. They're dry. Um, you can use it. You can go for a short drive, just to park it somewhere if you'd like to overnight. Mm -hmm. Best left overnight. And in terms of applying a, a conditioner or a care product, mm -hmm. um, anything that you apply, uh, it's best applied a day later. Okay. Um, you can apply our product called the Leather Shield, which prevents friction damage, or you can apply um, a leather protector, which has sort of UV filters to, to protect against fading. You can apply one of the two products, but again, um, the most important thing to remember is do it a day later, Do it 24, give it 24 hours before okay. you apply anything to it. Sweet. Yeah, there you go. Any questions? Well, I guess I do have one question. There's one little spot. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's say you have a seat that's in pretty good condition. It doesn't have like a ton of cracks, but yeah. there's one little spot where the paint's gone. So would you do that entire piece or would you just spot treat that one little area where it's so gone? So you could do both, right? Um, you could just treat that one spot where you've got an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but in order to do that, the color match has got to be extremely spot on, okay. right? Uh, even the gloss levels have to match very well, right? And, and usually um, it's very hard for us to match particular gloss levels because every car is, is different. Yeah. Leather in every car is different. Mm -hmm. So um, what we recommend is maybe it's best just to do a panel, mm -hmm. you know, and just very gently blend it in so that it all looks um, so that this particular panel doesn't stand out. Okay. Um, that would be my, my 
preferred approach unless you have an airbrush mm -hmm. um, that you can use to spray it because when you right. spray the the paint you can blend it's it's much easier to blend in as opposed to applying using a sponge okay well it seems pretty simple so i actually think i'm gonna head home and do it on my own m3 but it's the end for you guys so if you could like this video comment below and subscribe for more videos right here at the rag company youtube channel